Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to our Divine Healing Campaign 2020. Want to say thank you so much for tuning in with us tonight. We are excited about what God is going to do. We're extremely excited about the things that you're going to hear. We know you're going to be blessed as a result of the word of God that you hear this week. Amen. Because the power of God is amazingly, amazingly awesome. It is powerful. And listen, we just believe that uh, because this is the will of God that we do this, that you are going to be blessed. Uh, we believe that you're going to receive revelation. We believe that you're going to receive knowledge. We believe that people are going to be healed as a result of hearing the word of God and so that's really really what we're excited about we know lives are going to be changed we know bodies are going to be healed amen and we know that glory is going to be given to the Lord Jesus Christ amen praise God so again thank you so much for tuning in tonight listen before we go any further I want you to I uh, want to encourage you to do what we call or what they call a watch party invite your friends um, gather people around uh, hear the word of God together so that everybody can just be blessed as a result of hearing the word of God amen right there with you sharing the word of God this week so again we invite you to you know get a little party go and tag your friends and let everybody know what's happening here at full gospel word and worship center by way of our divine healing campaign now this is the opening night here and um, we're gonna be here all week and this is the schedule that we're going to be having so our faith clinics will start um, as a matter of fact, in the morning, our faith clinic will start at 10 o'clock. That'll be every single morning, Tuesday, Wednesday, or Wednesday, Thursday, Friday mornings at 10 a.m. And then we'll be coming back nightly at 7. That's for the rest of the week. So listen, we've got all week to hang out around the Word of God. We've got all week to learn things. We've got all week to be blessed. We've got all week to give God praise. So let's just do that. And as you hear the Word of God this week, we understand, uh, we, we believe that, that just what I said is going to happen. Lives are going to be changed as a result of God's power going into operation. As a, as a result uh, of the word of God going forth this week, we believe your life is going to be changed. All you need to do is hear it, believe it, receive it, amen. And you're on your way to receiving all that God has for you. I want you to listen with an open heart. We want you to have your listening ears on as our teachers used to tell us. Have your listening ears on and your heart open to receive. Praise God. You may hear something that you've never heard before. Don't shut down. You may hear something that you don't understand. Don't shut down. Don't worry about it. Clarity will come. Praise God. So stay open so that you can receive all that God has in store for you. Amen. This week also want to let you know if you have a prayer request uh, we want you to go to full gospel word and worship center's facebook page uh, click on the prayer request link and then go to the divine healing campaign prayer request praise the lord there is a form there fill that out submit it and um, that'll come to us and on friday night we're going to be praying over all of the requests uh, that come in praise god that uh, during the week we're going to be praying for those requests on friday night so you you want to go to our Facebook page you want to uh, find the form there fill it out submit it and we'll get that we're gonna print it off and again on Friday night at the close um, of our services we're gonna pray over those requests and we're gonna expect amen complete restoration and healing amen of your body praise God it's going to be an awesome week so again this is the opening night, and we've got all week long to just share, uh, to hang out, to fellowship, to enjoy the word of God that's going to be coming forth. Praise the Lord. And as I said earlier, uh, here at Full Gospel, this is one of the, the biggest events that we have in the year. And so we're always excited. We're always in expectation. We're always in faith about what God is going to do during this time because we've seen the power of God go into operation. We've seen a demonstration of the Holy Spirit um, in these meetings countless times, many times before. We've seen numerous things happening, praise God, as a result of the power of God. And this is no different. I know you're viewing live there, but listen, let's not diminish the power of God just because you're viewing live, because there is no distance. There is no difference. You can expect to receive, praise God, because the power of God, the anointing of God is real. So again, just be in expectation and expect God to bring to you what you need this week by way 
of healing. Praise the Lord. And so just before pastor comes up, I want to give you just a little bit of information about him. Just a little brief introduction because you might be saying, well, who is Pastor Holmes? And, you know, well, why is he going to be bringing this message? And, and how does he know? How do we know that he knows? Well, glad you asked. Let me tell you. Um, first of all, he is the pastor here at Full Gospel Word and Worship Center. He's been in ministry for 47 years and pastoring for 44 years. And the Lord has anointed him. Uh, the Lord anointed him many years ago for such a time as this. Praise God for such a time as this. Because we understand that people uh, need healing things happen the enemy comes against our bodies and sometimes we don't know what to do sometimes every battle is not won sometimes you know people have questions and so on and so forth so this message is definitely needed in the body and the Lord has anointed pastor home to bring it amen and you know we here at full gospel word and worship center as I said we've seen the power of God in operation you know many many times we've seen many many healings but not only for us but people here in our city and then people are Broad can also attest to the fact that God has definitely anointed pastor. God has equipped him. God has anointed him to teach this message, to preach, to explain, and to proclaim this message of healing. So I want you to prepare yourself to receive. Praise God. Receive what? Receive insight. Receive some knowledge. Receive a greater understanding of God's word pertaining to healing. Our theme this year is the healing benefit. And when I think of the word benefit, I think of something that's good for me, something that's going to do me good, something that's going to make me better than I was. Benefit, the healing benefit. That's our theme this week. Praise God. And I want you to know that something good is going to come to you. Something good is going to happen to you as a result of the healing benefit. So again, set your hearts Get yourself together and get prepared to hear the word of God as Pastor Holmes come this week, tonight, and the rest of this week to minister the word of God to us on healing. In Jesus' name, be blessed. Praise the Lord, everybody. I'm so glad that you're tuned in today. And it's going to be a tremendous time. We're going to have a tremendous time this week. I'm excited about what God is doing. I'm excited about what he has uh, given me to share with you. It's going to be a blessing. And uh, this week we're going to be dealing with some things uh, that I believe are going to set the captives free. Praise God. I think a lot of questions are going to be answered and dealt with through the teachings every night uh, this this week and so and also during the morning sessions so I want you to prepare yourself prepare your hearts to receive and we're going to get into the Word of God and it's going to be a real blessing I want to just go ahead and say something about tomorrow night and and even tonight tomorrow and throughout I'm really going to be dealing with some things that's going to help people because I, I want to one of the things that I want to see happen is more people receive healing. And the hindrances to healing has to be removed. And I'm really going to deal with some things that pertain to these hindrances and things that are keeping people from receiving healing, keeping people from even believing for healing. We're going to deal with some of those things. And uh, I have a special message tomorrow night pertaining to some things, uh, a... I call it, uh, you know, some sacred cows that got to be killed. Amen. We're going to slaughter it, slaughter it on the altar of truth. Praise God. Uh, because if we are holding to some of these things, uh, these things can be a hindrance to us. What you think and what you believe has everything to do with how things are going to turn out for you. Amen. And so let, without further ado, let's get into, let's pray, and then we're going to get right into the word. And I'm sure you're going to be blessed. Father, we thank you once again for this opportunity to come before you. We thank you for all that you have done already. We thank you for what you will do momentarily. Thank you for utterance in the Holy Ghost that I may speak according to the perfect plan and will of God. That only those things which you desire will come forth. That there will be much given by, word of, by, word of, by way of knowledge. 
Thank you for knowledge. Thank you for wisdom. Thank you for insight. Thank you for revelation. Thank you for illumination. Thank you, Lord, for every hungry heart being filled in the name of Jesus. We praise you. We give you glory. And then thank you also for stretching forth your hand to heal. Thank you for signs and wonders being done through the name of your holy child, Jesus. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, we thank you. And everybody say amen. Now, I want you to turn with me to the 103rd Psalm. Uh, this is where our theme is coming from, Psalm 103. I'm actually going to begin at verse 1, and then we'll back up again. Let's begin at verse 1, Psalm 103, starting at verse 1. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfieth thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. All of these things that we just listed and spoke of are all called benefits. These are benefits. These are things for, our, for us. These are for our good. Let's look at those benefits again. <clears throat> First of all, he said in verse 3, who forgives all thine iniquities and heals all thy diseases. That's, that's a benefit. The next thing he says, who redeemed thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. And then who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Now all of these are wonderful benefits, but today we're going to, we're going to deal with the first thing that it talked about. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases. Notice that again, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases. Now this is a revelation that David had many years ago. One of the greatest hindrances to faith for healing uh, today is the uncertainty of God's will to heal all. And I plan to share some things with you today that I believe is going to help you understand. Uh, by the time I'm through tonight, you should have more clarity and more insight and light on the will of God as far as healing is concerned. Uh, you see, faith begins where the will of God is known. You cannot believe for something you have no knowledge of. And this is one of the reasons why there's so much unbelief and so much of a lack of faith in the hearts of many people, even in the church. I'm talking about believers, born-again believers. In fact, you don't hear much. You don't hear, when you look at the entire body of Christ, you don't hear very much of, on the subject of healing. And I think that's, that's, that's a sad thing. I think it, it's something left out. But I'm going to show you today that, and that healing belongs to you. And we got to deal with this issue of, is it God's will to heal? You cannot, as I said, exercise faith until this question is settled forever in your heart. There cannot be any shadow of doubt that it is God's will to heal you. If you have doubt that it is his will to heal you, you cannot receive healing. I'm going to say that again. If you doubt that it's his will to heal you, you cannot receive. That is, you're not going to receive by your faith. That's certain. You're not going to receive by your faith. And sometimes there's other manifestations that come that causes people to receive. But praise God, if you're going to receive healing on your faith, then you're going to have to know and settle in your heart 
for good forever the idea of God's will you need to know that it is God's will for you to be healed anything short of that will certainly interfere with your ability to believe God for healing you need to be absolutely thoroughly and totally convinced that it is God's will for you to be healed Praise God. And, and that, that truth is especially important when you're dealing with stuff in your body, when you have things coming against you, when, when there's sickness or disease in your body, when there's pain in your body. You need to understand something. And very often people do not understand. Uh, well, they begin to doubt because of the length of time that they suffer. Or they begin to doubt because they have prayed and it seemed that nothing has happened as a result of their prayers. Let's look at a few things to help you understand why I know it is God's will for you and I to be healed. It's his will. But before, I t before we go further, let me say this. The will of God is not automatic. Something can be God's will and you still not receive it. Some people are under the impression that if, if, God's, if it's God's will for me to have it, I'll get it. No, that's not true. And that's not what the Bible teaches. For instance, I've used this many times before. I'll use it again. You know, 2 Peter 3, 9 says, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward. That means toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. It is not God's will for any to perish, but that all come to repentance. And yet all are not coming to repentance. In fact, according to what Jesus said in Matthew, the seventh chapter, there's more lost people than there are saved. Many more. Many more lost. Well, what is the problem? Because it's not just a matter of God's will. It's a matter of us believing and acting upon what he has said and so that's one of the things we have to understand now if you can understand because I've had I've had discussions many times with many different people including ministers about the will of God and most or many of them have said to me not most but but some have said to me that it is not always God's will to heal in fact for me to say that bothers some people because they say well God chooses who he's going to heal we're going to see if that's true today God chooses he's who he's going to heal now imagine that that uh, you are a sick person and you are you're suffering and you've been suffering for a long time you don't want to suffer of course you're in pain and all kinds of things and you're crying out to God for healing and someone comes as a representative of God a minister perhaps of the gospel and comes to tell you you know it's not always God's will to heal sometimes he just wants us to bear it what kind of hope does that, does that give you what kind of strength does that give you what kind of help does that give you <clears throat> excuse me it gives you none no help no hope in fact, your hope is deferred. And the Bible says hope deferred makes the heart sick. It makes you sick at the heart because you can't seem to, God may not want you well. He may not want you well. Think about the same thing. And now not only are you told he may not want you well, but your friend or some neighbor or someone you heard of, or someone you know, have been suffering as well. And they come rejoicing and saying, I prayed and I believed God and God has healed me. How does that make you feel as one still suffering and having been told God doesn't always want to, you to be healed? Sometimes you must just suffer because he wants you to bear your cross. Nowhere in the scriptures that where Jesus talked about bearing your cross, 
that he have sickness in mind. You will not see that in the scripture. Yeah, you bear your cross and follow him, but the cross have nothing to do with sickness. Now, I'm going to show you from a, a number of things. Let's look at a few facts about the Lord Jesus Christ. First of all, every word that Jesus ever spoke and every action that Jesus ever took, including healing the sick, was in perfect harmony with the will of God. He never said anything and never did anything that was not in perfect harmony with the will of his father. In fact, the truth of the matter is that Jesus was the physical expression of the will of God. As a matter of fact, Jesus never did anything or said anything on his own. Did you hear that? Jesus never did anything or said anything on his own. John 5, 19 states, Then answered Jesus and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, The Son can do nothing of himself, but what he seeth the Father do. For what things whoever he doeth, these also doeth the Son likewise. This means that whenever Jesus healed the sick, or any other thing that he did. It was as a result of him seeing in the spirit, no doubt, his father doing the exact same thing. Jesus also expressed the fact that he came to do the will of God and that he did nothing of his own accord. Notice John chapter five and verse 30. It says, I, Jesus speaking, can of my own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just, because I seek not mine own will, but the will of the Father which hath sent me. Hallelujah. Furthermore, Jesus declared that he always did the things that pleased his Father. He always did things that pleased his father. The eighth chapter, look at the eighth chapter with me of John. Starting at verse 28, verses 28 and 29. Then said Jesus unto them, when ye have lifted up the son of man, then shall ye know that I am he and that I do nothing of myself. But as my father hath taught me, I speak these things. And he that sent me is with me. The Father have not left me alone. For I do always those things that please him. I want you to keep these things in mind because they're very important uh, in connection with what we're going to say and in connection with the will of God to heal you. Now think about, think about it for a moment. Every time Jesus preached the word, it pleased the Father. Every time Jesus taught the word, it pleased the Father. Every time Jesus healed the sick, it pleased the Father. Every time Jesus cast out devils, it pleased the Father. Now, if the Father was pleased with the preaching of the word, the teaching of the word, the healing of the sick, the casting out of devils, how can he then also be pleased with not preaching, not teaching, not healing, not casting out evil spirits? I mean, if he's pleased for it to happen, then how can he also be pleased for it not to happen? This makes no sense. Further evidence of Jesus doing everything according to the will of God is found in Acts chapter 10 and verse 38. It says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. 
for God was with him. Notice in this passage that the scripture says that Jesus healed all that were oppressed of the devil. Now healing, physical healing, is a restoration of the body from a diseased condition. Anytime healing is used, it has to refer to a recovery, either from some sickness or disease or some injury. There's a recovery. The word of God says that Jesus was anointed to heal all that were oppressed of the devil. Therefore, every person that Jesus healed were oppressed of the devil. Every person that Jesus healed was considered as being oppressed of the devil by him. Amen. Further evidence of this is the fact that Jesus was manifested Manifested, the scripture says, to destroy the works of the devil. 1 John 3, 8. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Now again to the question of God's will to heal. Here's something, a very important biblical fact about Jesus. There is not one single case in the ministry of Jesus where he denied anyone healing. Now I hear people all the time say, I hear, I've, I've heard laymen, you know, I've heard ministers say, as I already stated, it's not always God's will to heal. But not one of those people, including you, if that's what you say, you cannot find one case, not even one, where Jesus denied somebody healing. Now, wait a minute. If he didn't deny them healing, why didn't he? You mean it just so happened that everybody that came to him, it was God's will to heal them? But now somehow that changed? What changed it? Not one single place in the word of God, in the ministry of Jesus, where he told somebody, God does not want you well. There's not one single case where he told people or told anyone, God is trying to work out something in your life. See, these are the kinds of things we hear people say. Well, God may be trying to work something out in your life, and the poor sick person is suffering needlessly because they got some idea that they got from some preacher or someone else that God has some special purpose in them suffering. And them having, he's working something out in their life. Not one time did Jesus ever tell anybody that God was working something out in their life, therefore they were to stay sick. Not one. Not one. I've even heard people, they don't understand, it. they don't realize that, that they're in pride, but they're in pride. You know, the Lord put this on me, so uh, 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 he, he won't put it on you if you can't bear it. See, the Lord won't put no more on you than you can bear. And then they say that, and they, they actually think that whatever they got, God put it on them, which is a whole nother argument because he didn't put it on you in the first place. But you say God won't put no more on you than you can bear. And so you embrace the sickness or the disease because you think God put it on you. And to try to stand against it or fight against it or go against it would be going against God. And see, the idea that God may have put it on you and he's put it on you for a specific purpose and, and you know what's, what's very interesting to me? When, when I sit down and I, when people say something like that to me, when they say something like, well, the Lord put this on me uh, to teach me a lesson, then my, my, my question to them is, have you learned the lesson? And if, if, if they say no, then my question is going to be, well, how do you know that he put it on you to learn the lesson? 
And what's wrong with God that he put something on you to teach you something that you don't have the ability to understand? How's he going to, he put it on you. Something has to be wrong in the mind of God. I'm going to put this on you to teach you a lesson. But you don't know what the lesson is. I'm not telling you what the lesson is. You've just got to suffer and try to figure it out. I mean, that's foolish. And, and if they say, yes, I learned the lesson, I say, well, why are you not healed? If he put it on you for the purpose of you learning something, then if you've learned it, you should be healed then. But the problem is all of these are religious ideas that we've gotten from other people that cannot be substantiated by the word of God. I want to say again, there's not one single case where Jesus ever told anybody anything like that. It's God is taking you through. This is your cross you have to bear. There's not one sick person in the entire ministry of Jesus or with any of the apostles or any of them of the New Testament. You do not find one single case where any of them were told that God was working something out in their lives. You know, I'm thinking about a particular case where Jesus in John 5, Jesus came up to a man who was there and who had been suffering for 38 years. The Bible says when Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he said unto him, will thou be made whole? That's very interesting. Will you be made whole? It's, it's interesting to me because your will is involved in you receiving healing. Your will. Now, now I'm telling you, I've been doing this for a long time. And I know there are people who say they are willing to be healed. But as soon as you tell them what to do, they're unwilling to do that. They don't want to be healed. They want it if it can just come very easily. Just wave your hand over me and let it be done. That's, that's the way they want to do it. That's the way they want to see it. That's the way they want to experience it. But it doesn't always work just like that. Praise God. And sometimes there's something that you need to do. And I'm not talking about to earn the healing. I'm not talking about earning it. You don't have to do anything to earn it. Remember what our text said, who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all of your diseases. He forgives all your iniquities. He heals all of your diseases. Now, how much is excluded from all? He forgives all your iniquities. He heals all of your diseases. I want to say that again. He forgives all your iniquities. He heals all of your diseases. Is that true? Is that what the Bible says? Well, even if that, if I had no other verse but that, which I do, but if that was the only verse I had, I would say, how can God say, uh, how can it ever be God's will for me to stay sick? And at the same time, this passage is true. Who forgives all your iniquities and heals all your diseases. It doesn't say who forgives all your iniquities and heals all all your diseases if it's his will. That's not what it said. It said, who forgives all thine iniquities and heals all your diseases. What time do you have experienced or know of where it's not God's will to forgive you? Not God's will for you to be saved. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases. So when Jesus got to this man who had been there 38 years, who had been suffering for 38 years, he asked him, will you be made whole? The man said, sir, I have no one to put me into the pool. An angel stepped down at a certain at a certain season and stirred the water, whoever went in first was healed of whatever disease he had. I know in some, <clears throat> some people think that that is not true, that that was a superstition and all these other things people say, uh, but, but I believe what the Bible says. It's, it's written there and I believe it, period. Praise God. An angel went down into the water or stepped, 
into the water or stirred the water some kind of way, praise God. And whoever went in to that water after the stirring of that water by the angel, whoever went in was healed of whatsoever disease he had. Now, if that's not true, then the statement that the man made to Jesus when he says, sir, I have no one to put me into the pool, that's got to be uh, superstition. That's got to be something that's not real. It doesn't make sense for him to say that I have no man to put me into the pool if the pool situation is not true. It's true. Period. Don't let anybody tell you differently. But now Jesus says to the man, the man says, I have no one to put me into the pool, but while I'm coming, another steps down before me. Now Jesus ministers to the man, ministers healing. Now, Jesus is ministering to this man by a manifestation of the gifts of the Spirit. Like, for instance, word of, uh, I mean, um, gifts of healing. Because the man don't know who Jesus is. I told you a little earlier, you can't have faith beyond knowledge. You cannot believe something when you don't know. This man did not know Jesus. He did not know who Jesus was. Perhaps he just thought it was some stranger you know, striking up a, a, a discussion with him. Sir, I have no one to put me into the pool, but while I'm coming down, uh, another steps down before me. Then Jesus said, rise, take up your bed and walk. And he uh, that was sick took up his bed and was healed. He was healed and took up his bed and walked. That man was healed. Now, later on, that man... You know, the Jews said to this man, listen, you, it's the Sabbath day. You don't have a business carrying your bed around. He said, the same man that made me whole told me to take up my bed and walk. And they asked him, who was it? The Bible said he wist not who it was. That means he did not know for or because Jesus had conveyed himself away, a multitude being in that place. And so now Jesus runs into the man a little bit later on. And what does he say to the man? He said, sin no more. Behold, you are made whole. Sin no more, lest a worse thing come under you. Now notice that. He didn't say what his sins were or what his sin was. Perhaps, uh, and I believe personally, that evidently whatever this man's condition was, was as a result of sin. But Jesus didn't deal with sin as such. He healed the man and said, now, sin no more, lest the worst thing come unto thee. But he didn't stop ahead of time and say, well, I want you to be healed, but let's talk about this sin. I want you to be healed, but let's talk about this problem. Not only that, you remember there was another case where a man was sick. Uh, well, he, was, he had the palsy, creeping paralysis. And he was carried by some of his friends or family members, someone. He was carried by some people. And Jesus was in the house teaching. And they start taking, they couldn't get in. So they took apart, they went up on the roof and took it apart and let the man down in the midst of Jesus. And the scripture says, when Jesus saw their faith, he said, son, thy sins be forgiven thee. Isn't that something? He told him right then, your sins are forgiven. What am I saying? I am saying that he will address it, but he doesn't say, I'm not giving it to you because of it. See, that's what, for instance, uh, I'm, I was going to go to this a little later on, and I may still go there. But remember in James, <clears throat> James 5, 14, starting at verse 14, is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church. Let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. The prayer of faith shall save. That means heal. That same word is heal. The sick. And the Lord shall raise him up. Now notice. And if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven. So how does Jesus operate that way? And how does the word operate that way? But then somebody tells you, you can't be healed because the Lord is trying to work something out in your life. 
praise the Lord. Amen, Pastor. Amen. Now, let's, let's, let's look at something else. We only look at some accounts where Jesus healed all. <clears throat> because if he, if it's not his will to heal all, then why did he do it? Why did he do it? He did it because it was his will. Jesus, there are accounts where Jesus healed every person that came. We'll start in Matthew. Matthew chapter 4, verses 23 and 24. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. And his fame went throughout all Syria, and they brought unto him all sick people that were taken with divers diseases, that means different diseases, and torments, and those which were possessed with devils, and those which were lunatic, and those that had the palsy, and he healed them. And I notice, among all of those people that came, he never stopped and told one of them, not you, it's not God's will. He never stopped and told one of them, God's trying to work something out in your life. No, no, he didn't. Matthew 9 and verse 35. And Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom. Now notice, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. Now notice in this passage, passage that the scripture said every sickness. The sickness does not restrict or limit Jesus. It doesn't limit his willingness or ability to heal. In other words, it doesn't matter what the sickness is that you may be suffering from. His willingness and his ability to heal you remains steadfast. Let's go to Matthew. Matthew 12 now. We were already in Matthew 9. Matthew 12 and 15. And when Jesus knew it, he withdrew himself from thence, and great multitudes followed him. And he healed them all. Great multitudes. Great multitudes. Look at chapter 14 and verse 14. And Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion toward them and healed their sick. Now let's skip down to verses 35 and 36. And when the men of that place had knowledge of him, they sent out into all that country round about and brought unto him all that were diseased and besought him that they might only touch the hem of his garment. And as many as touched were made perfectly whole. And then let's go to Luke chapter 6, starting at verse 17. And, it came, and he came down with them and stood in the plain and the company of his disciples, and a great multitude of people out of all Judea and Jerusalem, and from the sea coast of Tyre and Sidon, which came to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. And they that were vexed with unclean spirits, and they were healed. And the whole multitude sought to touch him, for there went virtue, or power in other words, out of him, and healed them all. Not only did Jesus heal all that came to him, but he gave his disciples authority to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. This shows you and me that the healing power of God that was released in the life and ministry of Jesus did not cease with his death and resurrection and ascension. Hallelujah. 
and that he intended for the word to continue. He intended for his healing power to continue to be manifested. Hallelujah. Hold on, my dear brother or sister that's out there sick. You've been lied to, but truth has come now. You're being told the truth. God's not holding up your healing. God's not punishing you, trying to stop you from receiving. God wants you well, who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases. Hallelujah. That's what the Bible says. Is y'all saying that too? Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. In, in Matthew 10, we see, and when he had called, in, in verse 1, when he had called unto him his 12 disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Now, how is it that he gave them power to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease if he did not want all manner of sickness and all manner of disease healed? Praise God. Now, if it was his will to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease back then, then it's, his, it's still his will to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease, of disease today. Also, notice something else. That when Jesus empowered his apostles to go out and to heal the sick, he did not empower them to heal some sick, but rather the sick. Matthew 10, 8 further, is further evidence that Jesus planned for his healing power to continue throughout the ages. Hallelujah. Amen. And there are many other scriptures that we can look at, but time will not permit us to go into all of those things. Another indication that it is the will of God to heal all is found in James 5, which we already talked about for a moment. Is any sick among you, let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over you, anointing you with oil in the name of the Lord. Now, one of the things I want to bring out about this, if it's not always God's will to heal, what are we going to do with this verse? Because the scripture says, is any sick among you. Now this is James writing to the church. Is any sick among you? Now if it's like what people say today, he would say some of you that are sick, or all of you that are sick, go and or call for the elders. And by the way, for them to have to call for the elders of the church and let them come pray over them and so forth. These were not just lazy Christians. These are people who are sick beyond helping themselves. These are people who are sick and in bed, in bed sick, can't help themselves. But Jesus said that, I mean, the, the, the Bible said that call, to call on the elders of the church, let them pray over you, anoint you with oil in the name of the Lord. And then it says, the prayer of faith shall so save the sick. That word save comes from a Greek word, sozo. It means save. It means heal. It means deliver. It means all of those. Praise God. And so it says, the prayer of faith shall save the sick, meaning shall heal the sick. One reason why some people are not healed is because the prayer they pray is not a prayer of faith. It's a prayer of doubt, a prayer of unbelief, a prayer of begging and pleading, a prayer of complaining to God about how long you've been suffering, a prayer of complaining, talking to the Lord, telling, asking him, how long do I have to go through this? A prayer of, Lord, why me? Why did this happen to me? That's not a prayer of faith. A prayer of the prayer of faith is the prayer that you pray in faith. 
with expectation of receiving. It's the prayer you pray in faith. My, my, what do you do? What does the sick do who call for the elder of the church? They are sick in bed and cannot help themselves. They call for the elder, the leader, the pastor, one of the leaders in the church. And they come to the house to pray for them or to the hospital to pray for them. And they pray a prayer like, Lord, if it be thy will, touch this dear sister, touch this dear brother, and Lord, if not, give them the grace to bear it. Give them the wisdom to understand that they may not experience it now, but you have a plan, and you're God, and you're too wise to make a mistake, and too good to be cruel. Well, I'm going to tell you, the sick person feels like somebody made a mistake because I'm sick and I'm suffering and, I can't, and I'm tired of it and I can't get out of it. And then they hear some prayer like that. Praise God. That's not prayer faith. If somebody came, you were sick, they came to your house and prayed like that, you need to interrupt them. You really do. So I'm sorry, I'm sorry. So hold on, hold on a minute. I'm sorry. I, I really appreciate you coming and thank you. Uh, and uh, God bless you. Because they're not praying the prayer of faith. It's the prayer of faith that's going to save. Not the prayer of doubt. Not the prayer of unbelief. Not the prayer of fear. The prayer of faith. Hallelujah. Shall save the sick. Now, is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church. What are we going to do with that? If it's sometime not God's will to heal some, then how can this scripture be obeyed? How can this scripture be true? Is any sick among you? It didn't say many of you that are sick. Many of those that are sick among you can call for the elders and see how much they can help you. No, no. Is any sick among you. Let him call for the elders of the church. This is something that God put in here. How can God give us a way to receive healing and it's not his will? How is it that we are to, to believe that God wants us to stay sick and our neighbor to be healed because he has some mysterious reason that I don't know and never seem to come into knowledge of. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities. Who healeth all thy diseases. He heals all. He heals all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, he said, is any sick among you? The instruction was given to any sick. Amen. Now, what did he say would happen? The promise was that the Lord would raise him up. The prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. If he have committed, if, if, if it's not the will of God to heal, if it's the will of God to heal some and not heal others, then who would qualify as the any? Who would qualify as the any? It's God's will to heal this one and not the, well, well, who's the any? Is any sick among you? Hallelujah. Listen, if God's will, God's will can never contradict his word. Some people have this idea, you don't know what God, because he has something. He, he has a plan because he's, you know, he knows everything and he's sovereign. What that got to do with what the Bible said about healing? Why make an exception of yourself? And those of you that have told yourself that lie, you have told yourself the lie.
that sometimes God may not want you well. And you're laying there suffering, and you've been suffering for years with that attitude. You've got to get that change. You have to get that change because you have no hope of healing. You can't believe for it because you're not certain about God's will. You think God wants you to suffer with it. And those preachers or ministers or pastors or other Christians that tell you that, it's easy for them to say that. I wonder when they say that if they're sick. Well, probably. If that's the way they believe, they'll believe it for themselves as well. Listen, don't fall for that. Don't fall for that. Where in the, in the ministry of Jesus did he ever turn anybody down? So if he didn't do it, now the Bible says Jesus Christ the same yesterday and today and forever. Well, he has the same love. He has the same compassion. He has the same attitude towards sickness and disease. He has the same attitude toward the devil. Nothing's changed. Hallelujah. So then, since he doesn't change, where do people get the idea that it's not always God's will? Let me tell you where they get it from. They don't get it from the scripture. They don't get it from the New Testament. The New Testament. They don't get it from the ministry of Jesus. So where do they get it from? Two places. Mainly, one, being taught that. And two, hearing, seeing, or knowing of someone who failed to receive healing. And so they say it can't be because such and so prayed and they didn't get healed. If it's God's will to heal, I get these kind of questions sometimes. If it's God's will to get, be healed, then they want me to explain why somebody died. How come this person died? I've even had questions like, here's a saintly woman, a woman of God, a, 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 mother, a, a mother of the faith, serving God faithfully, and she gets sick and can't get healed, and some sinner some um, rank sinner comes in and immediately gets healed. And it doesn't mean that mother didn't have a right to it. Whether she received it or not is a whole nother discussion. We can talk about why. But since I don't know her and I haven't had any personal contact with her, I can't tell you in her particular case. But I know of cases, and I know situations, and I've seen things happen, and there are things that hinder people from receiving. And one of the things that's going to hinder you from receiving is this crazy belief that God, some kind of way, made an exception of you. He wants everybody else well. Well, if God want me healed, why don't he heal me? He's doing what he can for you to be healed. That's one reason why we're doing this, to help people understand. And everywhere I've gone and everywhere I go around the world, in every nation I've been, that's what I've done. I preach this same thing. And we've seen healings. We've seen miraculous things happen abroad and here, here in our church and throughout different places in the United States that the Lord have taken me. Yes, he wants you well. Why don't he do it? Because, let's understand something. God, God, the, the kingdom of God is a kingdom of laws. God just doesn't do things arbitrarily. The kingdom of God is a kingdom of laws. He tells us this is how this works. This is how this happens. This is what you need to do. This is what you need to believe. And 
And I said earlier, your thinking and your believing has everything to do with how things are going to turn out. And I'll tell you right now, if your thinking's wrong, your believing's wrong. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. If your thinking is wrong, your believing is wrong. I want you to think for a minute. Just, just think. Have you ever heard a person claim to be an atheist? Have you ever heard someone, I have, have you ever encountered a person who say, you prove to me there's a God and I'll believe him. You prove it. My response to such people is, you can't be saved. You say, what? No. He that cometh to God must believe that he is. No, it's not God prove himself and then you believe. He that come to God must believe that he is. The same thing is true with healing. There are people suffering and will continue because they want proof of some kind. You prove to me that God is doing this and then I'll accept it. Don't accept it if you don't want it. I've seen people, I mean, they fight to hold on to sickness and disease, get angry with you. Some people say, you're giving people false hope by telling them that they can be healed. I'm not giving anybody anything except the word. If they're getting false hope, then they get it from the word. Because that word said, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases. Hallelujah. Now, I got I to gotta close soon, but I, I want to bring a, a, another point out. You need to understand that the body, the, the man is not just a physical being. We are spirit, soul, and body. Spirit, soul, and body. And so when Adam sinned, when Adam fell or sinned, everything was affected. The physical part of man was affected and the spiritual part of man was affected. It was affected. Death came as a result of sin. Everything was affected. As a matter of fact, the animal kingdom was affected. Nature was affected. Everything changed as a result of that sin. Well, now then, Jesus came as the remedy. He came to redeem us back to God. If that is true, and it is, since he came to redeem us and to connect us back with God, are you telling me he only came to deal with one part of it when all of it was affected? The scripture said he was wounded for our transgressions in Isaiah 53. He was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. That's what the Bible says. That's not a promise for healing. That's a stated fact. It happened. It's not going to happen one of these days by and by, perhaps before you die. It already happened. He was already wounded for our transgressions. He was already bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was already laid upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. Now I've heard people, and I've had people say to me, well, that's not talking about physical healing. That's talking about spiritual healing. We are healed from our, quote, sin-sick soul. And I would like for you to give me a scripture where it talks about us being healed from our sin-sick soul. Now, I know you can 
take this scripture in Isaiah and interpret it like that. But that's not what it said. Furthermore, the scripture tells us in Ephesians 2, we were not sick. We were dead in our trespasses and sin. We were not sick. We were dead. We were dead. Hallelujah. Furthermore, I'll go to two other verses in, in conclusion. Furthermore, when you see Isaiah said, and then you go here. Matter of fact, let me, let me back up and go to Isaiah first and read it again. I want to read it. I want us to look at it. I quoted it a little bit, but let's read it together. Isaiah 53. I'm going to read verses 4 and 5. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Now you look it up. You go look it up in your concordance. Go look it up and see that though the word here that's translated griefs is talking about sicknesses. That same word in the Hebrew that's translated as griefs is called sicknesses and carried our sorrows. The same Hebrew word that was translated sorrows in this verse is also translated pain. I want you to think about that. Surely he hath borne our sicknesses, our diseases, and carried our pain. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. Verse 5. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. Now, this is not talking about some healing of your sin-sick soul. How do I know? Let's go to Matthew 8. I'm glad you asked me. Matthew chapter 8. Actually, I want to start at verse 14. Matthew 8, 14. And when Jesus was coming to Peter's house, he saw his wife's mother laid and sick of a fever. And he touched her hand. And the fever left her, and she arose and ministered unto them. When the even was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils, and he cast out the spirits with his word and healed all that were sick. It wasn't talking about spiritual sickness. Notice, verse 17, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah, that is Isaiah the prophet, saying, himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. So Matthew is referring to the passage in Isaiah that we just read. Praise God. Not only that, Peter picked up the same thing. Praise God. Peter picked it up in 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 24. Peter, again, speaking about what happened in Isaiah, uh, you know, in Isaiah, says, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes, and notice what Peter says, ye were healed. That means it already happened. In the mind of God, it has been taken care of. It has been paid for. Hallelujah. It has been done. You're begging God for something that he already did. And by the way, back here in Matthew, the eighth chapter, all of those people that Jesus ministered to were physically sick. And it said that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet. So it wasn't, no, uh, it wasn't a, a spiritual healing. Healing belongs to you. 
who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases. Let's pray. Thank you, Father, for your holy word. Thank you for the privilege of speaking your word. Thank you for the privilege of being a vessel in your hand to bring clarity and understanding to people who have been deceived and lied to by the enemy and by well-meaning Christians. And they think that they have to suffer if they embrace your word. If they hear what you say and believe it, my God, I know they will receive their healing. It's a matter of them believing it and receiving it and refusing to doubt it. I thank you, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, Father, perhaps there's somebody watching who don't know the Lord Jesus as Savior. I want to give them an opportunity to receive Christ. If you're there and you have not received him as your Lord and Savior, right now, right where you are, I want you to slip up your hand and say with me, oh God, I am a sinner. I am in need of a Savior. Jesus died for my sins. I recognize that. You raised him from the dead. I recognize that. Because he died for me, and because I believe that you raised him from the dead, I can accept him as my Lord and as my Savior and as my only hope of eternal life. Now, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, glory to your name. I believe that I receive and I pass from death to life. And I am saved. Now lift your hands right where you are and give him praise for he is worthy to be praised. Now let me tell you something before we conclude tonight. I'm going to minister to people as the Lord shall direct me, uh, as I always do when I have these meetings. Even though this is virtual, you can't be here for me to put my hand on you. That doesn't mean God can't put his hand on you. And he will. I guarantee you he will. Praise God. He will do it. But while we were praying, I was leading that, what we call sinner's prayer, I heard the Holy Spirit say something in me, and I want to obey him. He said, I want you to minister to all those out there now that are in pain. I'm going to minister to you. If you are in pain right now, if it's on your head, touch your head. If it's your knee, your knee. Your foot, if you can. It may be in a spot that you can't reach, you cannot touch. That's fine. Just put your hand on your body anywhere as a point of contact. Listen before we pray. I'm telling you that when the Holy Spirit leads in such a manner, he reveals things so he can heal things. He leads in a manner because he knows who's there, who's watching, who's listening. And there are people that make connection with us from all over the world. Praise God. And so we don't know who, how many, who, from wherever they may be. But God does. And he knows who's suffering. As a matter of fact, when this is all over, people will be able to go back and watch and they'll still receive healing. Hallelujah. But I want you to know that this is not something I'm making up. 
It's not just something that I thought of. The Holy Ghost said to pray for those in pain. Now, I said that because this is where I want you to set your faith. I want you to believe. Hallelujah. As a matter of fact, if you're in pain, you can touch your body with one hand, and I want you to raise that other hand right now, right where you are. Lift your hand up. Put one on your body, one in the air. Praise God. And I want you to say these words. Oh, God, I have heard your word tonight. I now see that in your word, you said you forgive all my iniquities and heal all of my diseases. I have heard tonight and I have seen tonight that there is no place in the New Testament and no place in the ministry of Jesus where anyone that came to him was denied healing. No place was anyone told God does not want you healed or he wants you to suffer for a period of time. No. I seen from your word tonight that you want me well. I am here in pain, but now I reach out by faith to receive healing. You said, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. With my hand lifted, I'm lifting up holy hands of prayer without wrath and without doubting. The moment the prayer is prayed, that power is going to enter into my body and will affect the healing and a cure and will undo what Satan has wrought in my body. And this pain will leave me immediately in the name of Jesus. Now that you've said that, I want you to believe as I pray. Father, thank you again for your holy word. In obedience to you, I am praying for those that are in pain. That man, that woman, that boy, that girl, the head, the back, the knees, the migraines, whatever it is, the pain that comes and goes, the pain that comes every so often and then leaves after a while, all pain, those in pain now, in that shoulder, in that left shoulder, or any shoulder, but I'm sent, I, I picked that up right now by the Holy Ghost. Somebody watching right now is your left shoulder. The Lord is healing you right now in the name of Jesus. Now, Father, thank you. I release the healing power of God. You have anointed me with a tangible anointing of healing power. You gave me a ministry, a special ministry to the sick. You called me for such a time as this. I am not the healer. Jesus is. But I am an instrument through which Jesus operates by his Holy Spirit. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I speak to pain. Pain, go from that person right now. Loose that man, that woman, that boy, that girl, in the name of Jesus. Loose them right now. Hallelujah. I see someone, he was sitting, you're sitting on a, a couch or something. You're sitting there, your legs stretched out because, because of pain. Your legs, you're sitting on the couch, your legs stretched out, your left leg. I can see you in the spirit. Get up right now, praise God, and, and start walking right there through your living room. Watch God, there it goes. Hallelujah. Get up now. Hallelujah. Praise God. You're, you've been having some issue in your arms, your shoulders. Start waving your hand. Start moving. Use your body as a weapon. Start defying it right now. Get up. Hallelujah. Say, I don't feel better yet. Get up and start moving in the name of Jesus. The Lord is touching you right now. Right now. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Praise God. You ought to praise him with me. Praise him. Praise him. Glory to God. For he is, he is worthy to be praised. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. I just saw something else. Somebody in low back. Something snapped in your low back. The Lord's healing you. Praise God. Let us know. Put the comment on there and let us know what happened. Praise God in the name of the Lord Jesus. The Lord's healing right now. The Lord's healing right now. The Lord's healing. Praise God. Feet. Hallelujah. Pain in the toes. Oh, my, my. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm seeing somebody. You, you wake up in the morning when you wake up. It's like you have what we call Charlie horse in both feet, in the bottom of both feet. You wake up often with your feet like that. Oh, man. Just excruciating pain. Sometimes it wakes you up. Oh, the Lord's healing you now. The Lord is saying, that's it. It's done. Believe you receive. Take hold of your healing right now. In the name of Jesus. Yes, I see that. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Some, someone also, the Lord's healed your ear. You've been having pain in your ear. Oh, wait a minute. Pain and loss of hearing. Pain and loss of hearing in your ear. In one of your ears, I believe it's the right ear. The Lord's healing you right now. Receive your healing. Receive your healing. If someone said, well, I'm having that, but it's my left ear. Don't get carried away about what side it is. Take the healing. Receive it. It's yours. God wants you to have it. Because there are some out there that have it in the right. Perhaps some in the left. I'm just giving what I see. Praise God in the spirit. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Yes. Yes, I see a knee healing. And especially, I'm, I'm looking at this one. This, this knee is swollen so badly. Oh, my, my. Glory to God. You've been in excruciating pain and can't walk because of the swelling. Oh, hallelujah. But the Lord has touched you. Get up. Get up and move. Get, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of pain. Don't be afraid. Don't, don't anticipate it in fear. No, no. Say, I'm healed. I believe that I receive my healing. If you believe you receive it, start praising him. Start praising him and giving him thanks in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise his holy name. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I know that God is touching people all over, everywhere. Hallelujah. People are being made whole. People are being set free in the name of Jesus. He came to set the captives free. Praise God. My dear brother and sister, those of you who are full gospel, I'm going to ask you to help us now. Thank God because of this, we don't have a budget like we usually have, but we still have things that have to be taken care of. And it's time for you to help us out. On the screen will come up, praise God, the different ways that you can be a blessing to the work. If in some way you have been blessed by what I said, then why don't you support the work? Help us. And let me help you understand something, because this is real. It's not, I, I don't do gimmicks. I don't like gimmicks, and I don't do them. I don't play games. I just tell you what the Word says and teaches. Here's what we all need to understand. When you give to the work of God, any work that's done by your enablement, through your gifts, you are going to have credit to your account. In other words, God lays it to your account. I may go out and do the preaching, but you help me do the preaching. You also get the reward for everything that took place. So your giving, hallelujah, is a blessing, and it will help us continue to do what God has told us to do. Praise God. God bless you. I love you. And don't forget, tomorrow morning, hallelujah, 10 a.m., we'll be back. We're going to be teaching. We're going to do our faith clinic. We'll share some things. There's a side of healing you need to understand. I just wanted to open up to help you understand 
the will of God for you to be healed. Now we're going to get into some other things to show you how to obtain healing. Now tonight we saw the manifestation of the Spirit, and he did that. Praise God. Praise God. But I want everyone to be able to be healed. Hallelujah. Thank you. God bless you. Keep us in prayer. Hallelujah. As we journey on this week in this great healing campaign. God bless you. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Questions rise, but in you I'm found. Surrender all to your will. And while you 